It's preferable to be on the ground wishing you were flying than to be flying wishing you were on the ground. That's probably the genuine feeling that astronauts haven't told you as they face yet another delay in their first space flight on the Starliner. So, what happened with Starliner's first flight? Where are the flaws in this entire program that NASA and Boeing and ULA don't want to tell us? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. For the second time in a month, the first crewed launch of Boeing Starliner space capsule to the ISS was called off while crew members were in their seats waiting for liftoff. Truly unfortunate. Do you think the spacecraft is cursed? It's like if it's not one thing, it's another, and the end result always keeps Starliner here on Earth. This time, the issue did not stem from the Starliner capsule itself, but from the launch preparation system. Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, the builder of the Atlas V rocket, explained that the issue on Saturday involved one of three network computer racks in a building at the base of the launch pad. Each rack contains multiple systems, including identical circuit boards that function together as a ground launch sequencer, managing the final steps in a countdown. The GLS computers handle events such as the retraction of umbilicals and the firing of explosive bolts that release the rocket from the pad for takeoff. All three GLS systems need to be in perfect agreement for a countdown to proceed. For that system, we do require all three systems to be running. Two came up normally, the third one came up, but it was slow to come up, Bruno said at a news briefing. That tripped a red line that created an automatic hold. On June 1st, during the launch attempt, the countdown reached T-minus four minutes and then entered a planned four-hour hold. When the countdown resumed four minutes before blastoff, one of the three GLS circuit boards took longer than expected to synchronize with the other two. This delay was enough to trigger an automatic hold at the T-3 minute 50 second mark. Once a hold is triggered, the ongoing launch must be halted. This is because space station launches are precisely timed for when Earth's rotation aligns the launch pad with the space station's orbit. A necessity when aiming to rendezvous with a target moving at nearly 5 miles a second. An unplanned hold in the countdown for such missions triggers a minimum 24-hour launch delay. Therefore, engineers plan to start troubleshooting after draining the Atlas V of its liquid hydrogen and oxygen propellants and gaining access to the computer room. Deciding how to proceed depended on isolating the problem and replacing and testing any suspect components. While disappointed, the launch team remained focused. Mark Nappy, Boeing's Starliner project manager, likened the situation to getting a bad call in a game. You're a little irritated at first, or a little frustrated at first, but you immediately focus on the next pitch, and that's what our teams do. They're focused on the next pitch. He noted that everyone in the control room was already working on procedures for another attempt the next day, Sunday, 12.03 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, expressed a similar sentiment. The disappointment lasts for about three seconds, and then you immediately get busy and do your job. We'll be back. However, things did not go as planned. NASA later announced that the team would pass up the Sunday opportunity to give engineers more time to assess the computer issue. Finally, a new launch schedule was set for the Starliner's first crewed test flight, which includes a rendezvous and docking with the International Space Station. Based on the lab's orbit and the Starliner's ability to catch up, the next two launch opportunities after Sunday are Wednesday at 10.52 a.m. Eastern and Thursday 10.29. NASA said the agency would provide an update on Sunday. Not sure if the launch schedule will change by the time this video is uploaded, but the first flight of Starliner is becoming a joke right before our eyes. I can't be certain they're going to be sticking to the new schedule either. However, let's not forget that we also have an upcoming launch of SpaceX's gigantic Starship rocket come June 6th, according to SpaceX's newly announced schedule. Well, if both companies' launches go as planned, that will truly be an exciting moment. I'm worried, though, that Boeing might be facing humiliation if they choose to launch on the same day as SpaceX. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments down there. To be honest, I don't mean to curse the first crewed flight of Starliner, but it's clear that the entire process, from tech aspects to flight preparation, has shown some major shortcomings. In addition to the countdown issue that delayed the June 1st launch, there were other problems the mission managers had to deal with. A data glitch caused issues with the valves used to top off the propellant tanks on the Atlas V rocket Centaur upper stage, which was resolved by switching to a backup system. About 15 minutes before the scheduled launch time, the air circulating fans in the astronaut's spacesuits malfunctioned. Resetting the fans did fix the problem, however. Furthermore, the pump for the space station's urine recycling system failed unexpectedly, forcing the crew to store their urine in bags and tanks. This prompted NASA to change the payload for Starliner by sending a 150-pound replacement tank in Boeing's cargo hold.
To keep Starliner's mass distribution balanced, two suitcases containing clothing and personal hygiene items for astronauts Wilmore and Williams were removed from the payload manifest. They'll use our generic supplies that we have on board, said Dana Weagle, who manages NASA's ISS program. The reason why we have them there is for cases like this. Another concern, though not related to the recent delay, was discovered during the end of a crewed suborbital space mission by Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin space venture May 19th. When the New Shepard crew capsule descended for touchdown, one of its three parachutes failed to open completely. Unfortunately, the Starliner parachute system uses a similar design. So NASA and Boeing have been working with Blue Origin to ensure this issue doesn't happen during the orbital test mission. Steve Stitch, program manager for NASA's commercial crew program, said Blue Origin traced the parachute problem to a reefing line designed to keep the parachute from opening prematurely. There's a mechanism that's supposed to cut the line at the proper moment, but the cutters for some reason did not cut that line, Stitch said. We use a very similar cutter to what Blue Origin uses, so it was important for us to look at that data, Stitch said. We went back and looked at all of our test data. Stitch added that Starliner's cutters have been successfully tested 160 times, which reassured the team that the parachutes were good to go. Hopefully they are. After all, the first crewed flight of the Starliner is very important for Boeing, NASA, and ULA. Whenever it takes off, this long-awaited flight will be the first crewed test launch of the Atlas V and first Atlas rocket flight with astronauts since Gordon Cooper took off just a few miles away in the last flight of the Mercury program 61 years ago. Similarly, this will be the first crewed test flight of the Starliner, Boeing's answer to SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Crew Dragon, a less expensive aircraft, has already flown 50 astronauts and civilians into orbit over 13 flights, 12 of which went to the space station since its first test flight in May 2020. NASA funded the development of both spacecraft to ensure the agency could send crews to the outpost even if one company's spacecraft was grounded for any reason. If it doesn't take off by May 6th, the Starliner test flight could face longer delays to allow ULA time to replace limited-life batteries on the Atlas V rocket. Bruno said replacing batteries could take up to 10 days. The scrub countdown on Saturday is the latest in a series of delays for Boeing's Starliner program. The first crewed test flight is even seven years behind the schedule Boeing announced when NASA awarded the company a $4.2 billion contract for crewed flights back in 2014. In other words, Boeing has reached this point almost 10 years after the company initially said the spacecraft would be operational when the program first got announced in 2010. Due to many years of delays and a series of technical problems that have cost Boeing around $1.4 billion to fix, NASA has hoped to get Starliner into orbit by May 6th. But the launch was called off when United Launch Alliance engineers discovered an issue with a pressure relief valve in the rocket's Centaur upper stage. The Atlas V rocket was rolled off the pad and back to ULA's vertical integration facility, where the Centaur valve was quickly replaced. But after the test launch, Boeing engineers noticed signs of a small helium leak in Starliner's propulsion system. The leak was traced to a flange in the plumbing system that supplies pressurized helium to drive a specific reaction control system thruster in Starliner's service module. The leak was described as very small, but engineers needed to prove it wouldn't get worse during the flight and cause issues for the other thrusters. After extensive analysis and testing, mission managers concluded the spacecraft could be launched safely as is, stating that even if the leak rate worsened by 100 times the observed level, it would not pose a risk to the crew or the mission. As it turns out, the leak rate remained within acceptable limits on Saturday. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.